Anyways, moving on. So that's the story. It touched me a little bit close to home, okay? Um, so there was a black Miami doctor that was handcuffed while helping homeless during a pandemic. Dr. Armin Henderson, an internal medicine physician at the University of Miami Health System, was handcuffed outside his home last week. According to Henderson, the officer asked him, um, the officer that was driving by asked him what he was doing and if he was uh, littering. Henderson told him he lived at the house that he was, you know, cleaning up, packing his um, uh, truck with. Um, this all happened while on his way to hand out tents to cities homeless during the coronavirus outbreak. <laughs> Dr. Henderson says, these days, everyone is treated like they are black, but this is too much right now. I can't deal with it. <laughs> and for those who are watching the edited version of this and just not listening to the podcast, I'll post the video so you can see how it all went down. It's not super intense, but it is, it's uncomfortable and it, it, it just it's shedding light on a shitty situation. Mm. In a video statement released last week, Miami Police Chief Jorge uh, Colina acknowledged um, his age, uh, agency was aware of the viral video and was committed to investigating the incident. Uh, the city of Miami Police Department does not condone or accept profiling of any kind. Um, this is what the chief uh, said about the situation. Tina, are you, number one, are you surprised? Number two, what in God's green earth is happening? I it's don't a know. Doctor. Uh, well, they probably maybe they didn't. The, maybe the officer didn't know that he was a doctor. <clears throat> and again, I that's what. But that's, that's the, the whole point of profiling, right? Is you look at someone and you assume based on the way they look, whether it's their gender, their color, their skin, whatever, that you can look, even their clothes, just however they're dressed, you just assume that they're, you know, a certain socioeconomic, you know, level or social status, whatever. You just make these assumptions and it's easy for all of us to, to do, do that. that. We, it's just almost programmed into our brain to do that based on our experiences. But that you, you, you and I talk about this all the time. That's, we have to fight against that. And especially if you are in a position like a nurse, like a police officer, where you're dealing with the public, you have to constantly fight against, you know, the, your brain. Your, your brain wants to categorize everyone. Your brain wants to yeah. say, oh, my experience has been this way, so I'm going to feel this way toward this person. You've got to fight against that. You can't treat people that way. You have to assume, you know, we're, give everybody a clean slate and give them the benefit of the doubt. And, and this is why, because look at, look at what happened. Look how you're treating this person who's a wonderful human being trying to help others. <laughs> Right? So look, listen, I, so you guys got to go listen to Good Nurse, Bad Nurse. And when we do Good Nurse, Bad Nurse, a lot of times it's not just nurses. We talk about healthcare providers, talk about doctors and pharmacists all the time. And, and, and I also do the Everyday Hero Show. So we love talking about nurses and, mm -hmm. you know, healthcare providers that do good things. But understand, everyone is calling us nurses and healthcare providers and frontline workers, heroes just for doing our job. But homeboy. If you don't know anything about what doctor schedules are, sometimes they work seven days in a row. Sometimes they do 24, 48 hour shifts and have to sleep in on call rooms at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Like these doctors do like above and beyond. And this, this is not someone who's just leaving his house, going to work. After he's done his work, after he's done being a doctor, doing his hero work, right? He decides that he wants to go help homeless folks in Miami and what he's doing outside his house is packing his car full of tents so these people don't have to sleep outside and then the cop comes and handcuffs him in front of his own goddamn house like that you like what do you say like how do you it, it just it hurts to see it's it injustice hurts. upon exactly. injustice upon injustice it's ridiculous <laughs> I mean hopefully this story can uh help to educate people maybe yes. you know that maybe that that police officer will never, hopefully never do that again. Maybe that helped teach That'd him a good. lesson. Maybe he will help teach others. Maybe this story will get out there and, and help people uh, just, right. you know, not make the, have those, you know, knee jerk reactions. And I'm sure that police officer was trying to do his sure. job, but you know. No. So, and, and I agree with you a thousand percent when you say that, because I always look, you have to understand the police officer wasn't just rolling by and decided, Oh, fuck that black dude. No, someone called and yeah. said that, there was the black man outside that he, what he was doing. He was filling his car full of the tents. Um, and again, if you're watching this, you'll have seen the video. He's filling his car full of the tents. Um, and it looks like he's littering. 
right? So someone, one of the neighbors, someone driving by called the police and said, there's someone outside and he's littering, he's putting trash all over. Mm -hmm. But it was, number one, it was his own um, property. It was at his own house. And number two, he was filling the tents for the homeless. So I don't blame the cop for going there for questioning him. But you need to de-escalate. You need to understand the situation. That is your job. Your job is not to come out guns blazing. Mm -hmm. And to the cop's credit, to the cop's credit, it ended really quickly. He handcuffed him. Um, the doctor's wife came out, showed him the license. I mean, showed him my identification, unhandcuffed him, and it was done. That, that was the end of the situation. I know it's embarrassing. I know it's demoralizing. I know it feel, you feel like shit as a human being for getting handcuffed for trying to do something good. But I'd say, I don't know, it's, it ended, I think it ended as well as it could have ended for a situation like this. But like you said, hopefully this is a teaching moment. Um, and just, just to end this, I'm, I'm not a crazy person. I don't want this cop to lose his job. I don't want this cop anything bad to happen to him. Like you said, I just hope that he doesn't do this again and just let his cop buddies know, don't handcuff any black person, you see? I don't, it's not a good idea. <laughs> it's just not a good idea.